Na 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 na, da 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 na. Hey hey hey, goodbye. Da da da. <laughs> Brooklyn. I look. I look. I'm looking at everything that is going on with this Brooklyn Nets team. And the Milwaukee Bucks didn't want it. But uh, apparently, neither did you, Brooklyn. And I get it. I'm going to hear, but CK, they had injuries. James Harden's butt was hurt. Yeah, okay, but then if Kyrie Irving and James Harden were there, what about the others? Because I saw a lot of nothing from Joe Harris. Love Joe Harris. Shout out to Joe Harris. Saw a lot of nothing from Joe Harris. Blake Griffin was probably the only other on that team that did anything. Landry Shaman was up and down. It got to the point where Steve Nash was only playing two of those players off of the bench. Jeff Green and Bruce Brown. You know, he didn't even go to Landry Shaman no more. He had to keep this thing as tight as possible, knowing that Kevin Durant was going to be playing the most amount of minutes. Look, I'm not going to sit here and talk about the Nets. All I'm going to say is this. The Brooklyn Nets went out there and made all these kinds of trades and did all these kinds of things with their ro- their roster just to get one more round ahead of the Knicks. Congratulations. I don't know. For us, we shouldn't have even been there. But for the Brooklyn Nets, you're the number one team. You should have been in the next level. And then on top of that, we're going to see the Philadelphia 76ers then lose to the same team that beat us. So then maybe us Knicks fans shouldn't be so down on ourselves because the team that beat us, the Atlanta Hawks, are now in the Eastern Conference Finals. We got the Bucks and the Hawks in the, in the Eastern Conference Finals. And to be completely honest with you, I don't feel so confident in the Milwaukee Bucks getting this win in this series. The Hawks could be an NBA Finals team. Let that say in i don't know what happens next the hawks are hungry man nate mcmillan's got got a a, a team full of dogs over there going on so i don't know i don't know this could be a one-sided series or who knows i'm 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 kind of intrigued to watch this one i didn't watch the hawks and sixers one too much because i was too salty to watch the hawks i'm gonna watch this one now but yeah man Nah, 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 stop, stop. <laughs> All right, well, well, we got that bonding moment out of the way, Knicks fans. Now I'm about to piss off a bunch of Knicks fans. What? A lot of Knicks fans are not going to want to hear what I'm going to talk about in this video. But I need to get you guys ready for what could potentially happen for this team here in a few weeks. I need you all to be ready. So I'm going to let the intro play. I'm going to let you guys groove to the music. And then after that, I'm going to have to hurt some feelings. All right? Run the intro. What's going on, CK Crew? It's your boy CK, and welcome back to another video, guys. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell. Do not forget to like this video. You know what it is. Monday, see you over on Twitch. Follow the Twitch channel if you haven't already. And if you haven't, what are you doing, man? You missed some fun moments like this one that happened in the last stream. Speaking of the Hawks, I can't take Trey. Sleep. I can't take Trey Young serious. You see the way his head pokes out. Watch how his head pokes out at the end. <laughs> Trey Young like, hey Johnny. <laughs> I don't know why that's so funny. We have fun over on Twitch, so make sure you go follow the Twitch channel and don't forget to join the Discord where you can get all notifications for everything that your boy CK is doing, as well as have conversations about all this stuff offline. It's fun time. It's fun times. All right. So remember when I promised I was gonna piss you guys off. Here goes. We made a few videos on this channel talking about rookies and us drafting potentially um, with the picks that we have so far. We have three early picks, two first rounders and the, a second rounder that's the sixth pick, so 36th pick in the second round. So I talked about the possibilities of us possibly keeping these lower picks and getting two rookies and then trading the two uh, second round picks and stuff like that. We had all those conversations. I even came to you guys and heard what you guys wanted to say. And it's about 50-50 on whether we keep those picks or whether we move up. So now we have to talk about the realistic side of what's going to happen. And that is that the Knicks are going to trade these picks. And it's not going to be in a way that you might think. I did talk about the fact that the Knicks most likely could trade these picks up and get a draft pick in the top 10, that's definitely something that could happen, or hell, top lottery, like 11, 12, or something like that. But what's more of a possibility is all these names that we're hearing rumored to go to the New York Knicks from the Luka Doncic's, the Damian Lillard's, all these names, the Knicks could be looking to move these pieces to get one of these names more so than anything else. And I know that you're sitting, sitting there and thinking to yourself, yo, CK, that's not enough. And that's where the part that I'm gonna say to you that might piss you off that might come next. Now, I'm, before I say this, I need to let you guys know I might not completely co- co- co-sign this, but I'm also not completely against it because it's what needs to happen for this team to go to the next level. Now, we had two amazing rookies play for us last season in Emmanuel Quickly, who got all rookie 
second team. Shout out to, to Mayo quickly. And I do believe that he could have been all first team, but that's neither here nor there. I'm just going to let it be what it was. And Obi Toppin, who was our eighth overall pick in last year's draft, both guys proved to be very valuable to this team. Obi Toppin was a slave to the moment because, unfortunately, but fortunately for Knicks fans, the guy ahead of him, Julius Randle, had the best season of his entire career, which resulted in Obi Toppin not getting any minutes. So we didn't really get to see the full sample size of what Obi Toppin really truly could be. That being said, we might never, what? and I'm not saying because Obi Toppin is going to be bad, but it's because Obi Toppin might not be on our team for long. What the this is the part where it's gonna piss y'all off. I can feel the dislikes, I can feel the boos, I can feel the upset, but I gotta be real with y'all and I gotta get you guys ready for what could potentially happen. There's a reason why these names are thrown around the New York Knicks. We hear it every year, but at this, for the first time in a long time, the Knicks could actually make a move without having to gut the team the way that we would think our gut, we would have to gut the team. But it would cost us players that we might have fallen in love with now understand these things might not happen they might not happen but we also have to be in that reality where it could very well happen there are players out there that the knicks are probably going to try and, and steal from the teams because we can't hope and pray that you know maybe we can get Kawhi leonard in this offseason or maybe we can get fill in the blank for this offseason the knicks and leon rose and tom thibodeau they're probably going to be a bit aggressive in trying to move forward and getting some of these guys they're probably going to test the waters on a lot of these names that we're hearing right now you don't know if the zion williamson rumors are true i don't believe they're true now, I, I believe that there's 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 frustration with the, the pelicans but putting the two together just because of the rj barrett um partnership and the brotherhood between the two of them that's that's a bit of a long shot because it takes two to tangle because we love zion williamson because rj loves zion williamson the the pelicans may love the move because it's getting him out of the west but they may not love the move because they're getting rid of their franchise player but then also at the same time it could be a, a potential thing to happen because they could get guys like Emmanuel quickly obi Toppin, and some draft picks back for zion williamson and then they still have the likes of Brandon Ingram there as their team. So they still have a pillar that this team that they can build around with this team and then bring in those two young guys. So you have to understand that th these kind of things are going to be talked about upstairs. Your favorite player might not be here next year. And I'm trying to get you guys warmed up for that. Damian Lillard is another thing. You don't, you, there's no way you get Damian Lillard without A, dropping off a bunch of draft picks that we have. And we can do without gutting our teams where we're not, we don't have draft picks for the future because we have four in this draft alone. And then we can give up maybe one for next year where we have extra draft picks for the come up, coming year. And on top of that, you're probably going to have to flip like an Emmanuel quickly or flip Mitchell Robinson or flip Obi Toppin or flip a name like that. It's just the most realistic thing that's going to end up happening if the Knicks do pursue any of these names. So I'm gonna give you guys a breath, all right? Because I can feel the fumes. You gotta understand, this is something that a lot of great teams that are trying to make that next step do. It's just the way the cookie crumbles. And for us, though it would be a you know a hurtful and a hard thing for us to give up on names that we've grown to love and become so um, um close to along the years especially with these last few drafts at the same time when you put a damian lillard as your lead point guard on this team it all of a sudden changes the trajectory of this team yes we become a little bit older but at the same time we still have young rj barrett if you have to if you end up sacrificing guys like obi toppin and emmanuel quickly and some draft picks but you still have young rj barrett to be there long term you then still have you know other pieces that you can keep there long term you can't have the championship but also be the young upcoming team i i use the uh, toronto raptors all the time as an example but even when the toronto raptors what did they do even though they knew that Kawhi was not going to come back they still had to make a move they had to make a sacrifice in giving one of the most popular players in Toronto Raptors history and DeMar DeRozan and some other pieces to get a guy like Kawhi Leonard which resulted in a championship and though Kawhi Leonard did leave and you know there might be in a little bit of a spot now but they still kept their young pieces in OG Ananobi still there they had all these guys that they grew and they built themselves on this team for when he's gone at least the raptors aren't in the hole as the time comes up now yes i understand that they didn't have the greatest season this year 
but they still have a team full of younger guys. They got Van Vliet on a long deal. The Raptors could turn things around relatively quick, rather quickly rather than slowly with the future trajectory of their team. So I'm just saying that things like this have to happen. And Toronto is not New York. The minute you make this Damian Lillard move, the minute you see that the Knicks are being aggressive, you see that the Knicks are still continuing to win. That only helps the case for more other players to come and join the Knicks when we continue to grow and this becomes a thing year in year out where the Knicks continue to be good especially with Leon Rose showing who he is and showing what he does Walt Perrins the Scott Perrys those kind of guys showing that they truly make those moves and they truly do the things that the Knicks need to do to then become a next level team it's just what is going to happen what could happen and what most likely is going to happen I'm just being real with you guys we could keep the team this way slowly gradually um improve oh no Sign guys like Lonzo Ball and other free agents, get some more vets, and just continue to move the team up and move the needle up just a little bit for another year and then see what happens in 2022. Um, we could go that route, which is what I think is the better route, but also with a guy like Tom Thibodeau who's going to be on year two of his five-year deal. You know, Tom Thibodeau might be ready to heat things up a little bit sooner rather than later. Don't shoot the messenger. And you know, like I said, it, it, it could go many different ways. But I just need you guys to understand. But I need you guys to understand that as much as we may love these players and may love what the trajectory is for this team after the season we just had. But if, if the potential is there for something like that to happen, we have the assets to do it. And it's going to hurt, but it has to be done. So I'm just getting you guys prepared for that. That's all I'm doing. And with that, I asked you guys this. Would you guys move these younger dudes if it meant that you're getting an all-level, all-star, superstar-level talent for your New York Knicks. Would you move these fan favorites in quickly and this and third to get Damian Lillard, Zion Williamson, Luka Doncic? Would you do it if that deal was on the table? I need to know how serious some of you guys are with your team. Let me know in the comment section below. All right, now I'm done being bad guy CK. I'm sorry to be the one to break the news, but I had to break the news. It's a possibility. Let me know your thoughts about everything in the comments below. I'm expecting a lot of angry comments. I know it's going to happen. Just don't shoot the messenger. Just your boy CK here trying to get you guys ready. If anything crazy happens down the line, we're going to have this video to reference <laughs> me telling you guys to be prepared so you guys cannot be blindsided if something like that happens, all right? But it's been your boy CK. If you haven't already, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell. Do not forget to like this video. Like I said, find me over on Twitch where a lot of fun stuff happens. We're streaming tonight, Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays. See you guys over there. Join the Discord. I'm out of here. Let's get it. All love to y'all. See you guys in the next video. I got a big one coming for you guys tomorrow. It is the video. Y'all know. Y'all know. All right. Peace. Cold pizza. Tuesday. Tuesday. I got food up in the fridge. Y'all keep looking for that new way. I think I like it how it is.